Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a quick look at this garbage, which is SY Cable. And this is garbage because it's all falling to bits and disintegrating and discoloured and rusty. And we're going to have a look at why that is, and also what uh, SYK was actually supposed to be used for, and all those places, of course, where it's completely inappropriate. Now this is a piece of SY Cable, and this actually came out of somebody's garden where it was being used completely inappropriately. And as you can see, it's uh, in a bit of a state. Various discolorations here, the outer covering is cracking and all that. So let's just have a look at what this stuff actually is. Now this happens to be a three core cable, or two core plus the protective conductor. Protective conductor, green and yellow, as you'd expect. The other two are black. Now this one has got a bit of red tape here where someone has uh, identified the line or live or what they were going to use as that. So let's get rid of that. The proper identification is actually these numbers. So you can see on this one just about number two printed there. And this one should have a number one on it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Notice that they're underlined, so then you can check which way up they are. It doesn't matter with one and two, but obviously if it's six or nine, that would be uh, fairly important. This is, uh, so you just got the three in it there, or two core plus protective. You can get this in various numbers of internal conductors, and of course in various sizes as well. So uh, in a cores there, PVC insulated, and then over the top of that, on the outside, we have this transparent covering here, rather discoloured for the reasons we'll get to shortly. Underneath that we have this braid, and then underneath that we have this sort of inner filler material, which we'll just slice into that fairly carelessly because we're not going to be using this cable for anything. And then inside you've got the three conductors, and then we have the usual asbestos or cocaine or whatever spilling out from inside. Now the problem with this particular cable is a lot of people seem to believe that it's some kind of armoured cable and you could use it outside or bury it in the ground or whatever else in the same way you would do with armoured cable now. That's completely incorrect. This is not armoured cable. This is not going to provide any mechanical protection because it's very thin as you can see and it's very soft and it's quite easy to cut through as well. I mean if you just take the knife here you can pretty much slice straight through most of that. So certainly not something that's going to be durable and suitable for use underground. The other problem with this stuff is that this outer covering is not UV resistant, unlike, uh, say, generally black cables are. So what will happen is that if this is exposed to the sunlight and the weather, you get things like this, where the outer covering is just deteriorated away, cracks apart and starts to disintegrate. And you can see on this that this side of it looks perfectly reasonable. But you turn it over and it's all discoloured and brown because that's where the sun has basically damaged the outer covering. If we look further along this cable we can see the next problem. This was actually underground and as you can see the outer covering is still nice and transparent but inside it's no longer a shiny silver. And the reason for this is due to corrosion. So we just uh, slash a piece open and we just open it up. We can see inside this is just a horrible corroded shambles, so all uh, brown and disgusting, and all that colouring is just transferred over to the outer covering. So definitely not armoured cable, and definitely not sensible to use underground, which is where this particular piece was. Now what this cable is really for is, is a shielded cable. So you've got your many conductors inside, and then this covering here is a braided shield or screen which can be used to prevent interference either coming out or getting in. Normally this will be connected to the earth of the installation at either one or in some cases both ends. And again you need to use the appropriate glands for that. It's not suitable to use outside. It seems to be a popular thing on installations like air conditioning where this is trailed all over the roof in a disgusting spaghetti mess. But of course that doesn't work either because then you get this uh, degradation and uh, damage here. And of course it uh, falls apart within only a couple of years. And again we can see over this side where there's cracking and uh, breakage has occurred because this was the part which was above ground. Now you can use this inside, so for example if you wanted to connect say a uh, machine to some kind of wall panel it could be used for that. But again it's something which uh, will only be used in its appropriate locations. Another problem with this cable is there isn't actually any British or harmonised standard that really applies to it. When you buy this stuff it's quite often listed up as O complies with VDE, some number or other. That doesn't really mean a whole lot. 
So if you are going to use this, get the specifications from the manufacturer as to what it actually can be used for, and its suitable locations, and how much current uh, it can actually carry, because again that needs to be uh, defined, because it's not just the size of the conductors, it's also the thickness of this insulation, and how much heat can be given off, and various other factors. So it can be used in a few things, but it is definitely not an R1 cable, it's not suitable for use outside, and quite frankly it seems that 99% of the uses people seem to find of this stuff are completely inappropriate. And of course this uh, is uh, the kind of thing you would get. If you came across this on existing installation, so we're doing an EICR or whatever, then really this has to be coded up either as C2 or possibly further investigation. C2 in this case because obviously it's just disintegrating and falling apart and is corroded, so not suitable for the installation. Further investigation if it was in reasonable condition. You might want to need to find out the actual specifications of it. Because again, you can't just go and look up generic SY cable and say all is well. You really need to know who actually made it and get the specific details of that exact one. You can see here underneath this is reasonably intact, but it's already starting to corrode here where the exposed break was. And then this is the uh, covering there, so again, reason on that side, but sort of browned and somewhat damaged on the other. And again, this has gone rather brittle at this point where the moisture and things has obviously got in and the sun has damaged the outer covering. This isn't actually as bad as some of them can be, but you can see it's uh, certainly not a particularly robust cable. So that's SY cable, a cable which is not an armoured cable. It is not suitable for use outside, it is not suitable for use for burying in the ground, and quite frankly it's not suitable for use in a whole pile of places that some people seem obsessed on using it in. It is, can be used in uh, particular places, such as a cable going to a piece of machinery or something, if you need a screen cable for that, but uh, certainly in terms of uh, thinking it's an armoured thing and it's okay for outside, I think again because it uh, rusts, deteriorates, the outer sheath is damaged by sunlight, and it basically disintegrates. So that is it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.